good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is you guys are watching this video. Today we are going to demonstrate diffusion of a small molecule across a semi-permeable membrane. So uh, my students, you guys should have your lab packet from, um, from Canvas, download it, have it take a minute, make sure you guys have read through it before you continue with the video. Um, but we're going to be looking at how diffusion works today. So like I said, a, a substance across a semi-permeable membrane. Um, and we're going to be using iodine and starch today. Um, iodine is an indicator for the presence of starch. So we're going to see a reaction happen between the two molecules if anything passes across our membrane. Um, so there are some questions for you guys to answer on the lab. If you haven't already done so, make sure you do that pre-work ahead of time. Um, we're going to get started off by prepping our semi-permeable membrane or making a cell out of a plastic bag um, and a starch solution. So I'm going to go ahead and place uh, my plastic bag in a little cup to hold it still. And I'm going to put about three tablespoons of starch solution. This is just starch and water mixed together. So one, two, and three tablespoons, that will give us a nice large cell to work with. All right, and then we're going to tie it shut using a piece of string. So I'm going to tie the string around my bag or my semi-permeable membrane. Nice and tight, we don't want anything leaking out. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, so we don't have a bunch of this, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the top of our bag. But I'm not going to cut our string. We're going to use the string to help suspend our um, cell inside of our iodine solution that we're going to be making here in just a moment. So we're going to go ahead and tie this so that it'll hang from the little stick I have there. We want it to be suspended, not just sitting on the bottom. Oh, well, looks like it's going to sit on the bottom there, but I like to get that untied. Probably not, but it will float once we have our water um, and iodine solution in the cup. So I'm going to set this off to the side. And next, I'm going to prepare my iodine solution. Um, be careful with iodine if you are going to be doing this on your own. Some folks can be allergic to iodine. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a little bit of iodine in here. Probably about two tablespoons for my use. And this is a lower concentration of iodine than just straight iodine. And then I'm going to add water to about half to three quarters of this glass. And we'll see that it makes a light amber color. Um, and what we're looking to do is we're going to be looking to see if the iodine molecules are going to move into our bag or if our starch molecules are going to leave into the iodine solution and we'll see a reaction if either of those takes place. Um, so I'm going to take my cell and I am going to place it into my iodine solution. This one is going to float it looks like and I'm going to leave it sit here. Um, depending on the type of bag you use, I just use a sandwich bag. Um, it may take longer, it may take less time and you're going to watch it. Uh, anywhere you start to see some answers anywhere from about 25 minutes onward is my experience with this lab and um, we're going to watch it. We're going to look for any changes either in the liquid or in our cell that we have made. I did this previously uh, and I found I did take like I said about 25 minutes. We can't have a video that long. So I'm going to pull up our my first sample and this one's been sitting for a couple hours now we can see that there is quite a difference in our cells. Okay. So our cell that's been sitting in the iodine for quite a while is now purple. And here is the one we just put in. This is how it started. This is what it looks like now. Um, so like I said, there is a reaction. So iodine reacts with starch. And in this case, our reaction occurred inside of the bag, our starch in the, or iodine in the glass. Um, is nice, still clear amber colored, and our baggie has turned purple. The starch in our bag is now purple. That is a positive indication for the presence of starch. 
So if we were to let this one sit for um, 25, 30 minutes or longer, we would see a similar reaction occur inside of this baggie also. So we see a reaction here. We're going to make sure that we note our reaction. We're going to make sure we note our starting colors and our ending colors of both items. Um, and we want to make sure we know um, which substance moved. Okay, so think about that. Where did our iodine start and where did it show indication of starch at? Where did our starch start at? Do we have any indication of starch elsewhere? Um, so, but did we see movement of both molecules or just one? How does that explain semi-permeability? Um, so you think about it, here's an extension of it. If I was going to store some iodine someplace, would I want to put it in a plastic bag? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but we're looking at this item here right now. Um, we're looking how the iodine or the starch moves through a semi-permeable membrane. Again, after sitting for a little while, the uh, starch solution inside of this bag turned purple. And like I said before, iodine is an indicator for the presence of starch. Um, and it started off looking a little something like this, just a milky white substance inside of our starch cell and just um, an amber color in our iodine glass. So if you have any questions, my students, make sure you send me an email. Um, go ahead and complete that lab up and um, yeah, make sure you get back to me. Thanks.